There we go. Good evening and welcome to the regular meeting of the Independent City Council for Victory Monday, February 2nd, 2020. Uh, first and foremost, as you can see, we're still celebrating the victory of the Kansas City Chiefs in the Super Bowl yesterday and what a tremendous uh, month it's been for our community and uh, it's very exciting and for I think most of us a very uh, nerve-wracking game but congratulations to our, chief, our chiefs and we are going to we did add a special proclamation that we're going to read this evening um, for the Kansas State Chiefs that we will present to them at a later day date um, but we will start this evening with our invocation is Lupe here Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Shirley. Um, I have an old agenda. Um, so our invocation will be offered by Shirley Murdoch. If you would please stand for the invocation and remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. <laughs> Our dear Father in heaven, we come before thee at this in the capacity of a city council meeting. And we are grateful to be able to do this. And the machinations of city government are multifaceted. And we ask special blessings upon our mayor and the council men and women of guidance and discernment of the best things that need to be done. Uh, and sometimes those decisions are difficult. We're grateful for the privilege of citizens to come and give voice to their concerns. Only in America does this happen. And we appreciate being here in America, especially here in Independence. It's a beautiful city. And dear Father in heaven, we are rejoicing at the victory of the chiefs. And we ask that the weather will permit them to have the victory prayed on Wednesday. And tomorrow is voters' days, and we ask a blessing upon the citizens of Independence that they'll go to the polls and exercise this great freedom. And we give thee our love and gratitude for all of the blessings that we have here. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America. Of America. And, and to, to the, the republic, republic for which, for which it, stands, it stands, one, one nation, nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Madam City Clerk, will you please call the roll? Council Members Huff? Here. Perkins? Here. Doherty? Here. DeLucy? Here. Roberson? Van Camp? Here. Mayor Weir? Here. Um, we have some citizens' requests to speak to the council this evening. So as I call you forward, if you would please um, come to the podium and state your name for the record. The clerk will keep the time up here at the dais. Our first is Kenneth Love, who wishes to speak to the council regarding smart meters. Um, I'm sorry, city charter. It'll be three minutes, Madam Mayor. Okay, I, I can't read these other, I'm sorry, petitions. Um, so, Mr. Love, you will have three minutes. Good evening, City Council, Madam Mayor, City Manager, City Attorney. I don't know where to begin except for several months back, we had a petition going around to stop the AMI smart meters. City Charter required a certain amount of signatures to put a stop to this. Not only that, we also had another petition going around. I am the one that carried this petition to recall the mayor. Again, without the proper amount of signatures per City Charter rules and regulations, nothing happened. I have no problem would follow in the city charter rules and regulations. But I look at the city council tonight because at the last meeting I asked a specific question. And that question I asked is who do y'all represent? What is y'all's job? It's my understanding city council is supposed to represent the citizens 
of independence. But starting tomorrow, there's going to be an election. Now, not everybody's up for an election. Not every position will be voted on. But tomorrow's a start. And it's a start that the citizens are going to speak, and they're going to speak loudly. Why? Because there are people that are tired of coming to this podium, looking at this city council, asking questions, and waiting for an answer. I've asked the question at the last time I was here, per the city charter, rules and regulations, to run. Those rules and regulations per the city charter, I asked for an answer. Madam Mayor, you spoke to the city manager, and the city manager didn't answer. He turned around and questioned the city attorney. The city attorney was supposed to give an answer the next day. The next day what was given was a number, a number for the state of Missouri. I have contacted the state of Missouri, so has other people, and the state of Missouri has specifically stated this is not their election. This is the city of Independence election. You have with 30 the, seconds. Sorry, you've got 30 seconds. With the city of Independence election, I look at you as city council, madam mayor, city manager. What are you going to do about the city charter? Because I see it as tonight, again, nothing. Our next speaker is Katie Alexander, who wishes to speak about community improvement, at community improvements and diversity. Mm -hmm. Hi, as y'all know, I'm Katie Alexander, and I live at 3427 South Hardy, Independence, Missouri. And the reason that I wanted to come before you tonight was I wanted to speak first, and um, not perhaps least importantly at all, but quickly about diversity. Um, in 1980, 0.46% of independents stated that they were Native American, and that was grossly misunderrepresented because most people were given a birth certificate that said white, and so that's what they put on the census. And over time, as we have grown in a community, there are more than 40,000 Native Americans in the greater Kansas City area, many of whom reside in Independence. And many people are very traditional. And so we just ask that in the coming weeks and months that we think about if we have questions about is this a good idea in advertising themes or in cultural events that we contact someone that would not be me, but someone like the Greater Kansas City Indian Center or some other diversity expert that can give good advice on how to be culturally appropriate. So having covered that, the next thing I'd like to talk about is improvement in response times from the police since I first started coming here in September and had no idea how any of this worked, obviously. We have dropped from 45 minutes to about eight minutes on a really good response time. Unfortunately, we continue to have a lot of reasons to call traffic incidents and things like that. So the traffic incidents at 35th and Hardy still need to be addressed in some kind of meaningful manner. Uh, but the good news is that the response rates have gotten better. The next thing is the property improvement funds that have been allocated. I'm not that familiar with how they work yet, but it's my understanding that it's a geographically based, and I look forward to being able to utilize those so that I can continue to be a homeowner because otherwise I would be forced into removing myself from that status in this city. So those are the three things that I came to talk about and to make sure that we think about not only the diversity of the city in one capacity, but in all capacities, because we want to be respectful to everyone and not just some people, you know. So that's all I have to say about that. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Lucy Young, who wishes to speak about accountability, transparency, and city benefits. 
don't want you guys to pass out, but I'm speaking in the affirmative. I think this council is going to vote on something tonight, two things that really are going to make a difference for the citizens of Independence. The first one is Resolution 2711. It's the audit of the falls of Crackernick, TIF, and TDD, a.k.a. the Bass Pro Project. It was established in 2004, and it terminates in, in 20, excuse me, 2027. The projects include, <coughs> excuse me, Crackerneck TIF, Crackerneck East Retail TIF, and I-70 Little Blue Parkway TIF. Now, you guys aren't accountable for this TIF. You didn't vote it in. You inherited it just the way I did back in 2006. And every time we had to appropriate, for me it was the first time we had to appropriate $3.5 million, I was livid. The council was mad. We felt like we'd been tricked. I didn't vote it in, but we inherited just as you do. And now, for the uh, safety of, excuse me, for the transparency and accountability from this council, I'm asking that you approve the audit of this TIF. You're not to blame, but you can be held accountable. The other uh, resolution is 2710. It's to provide free or reduced spay neutering. Today on the city's website, there were 33 cats that were pictured. I know that there are more animals that need homes. But in my neighborhood, let me tell you what happens to me. We have a neighborhood where people just let their cats roam and they're not neutered or spayed. One cat had four kittens. A cat can have at least three, if not four, litters a year. Of those three, uh, of that first litter of four, they can have two litters in a year. So now you're going from one cat to 12 cats to plus another 12 cats, and one of the, uh, the third, excuse me, the second litter the first cat had can have one litter. That totals up to 48 cats a year. An average cat that lives outside can live approximately five years. It's longer. I'm here to tell you it's longer. <laughs> so how many cats will you have in five years? Had we neutered that one cat, all of this problem would have been alleviated. Now, I've per personally witnessed five kittens that were slaughtered by raccoons. There is not going to be 48 cats living outside, not, you know, but there's going to be at least 25, 26, and that's just my neighborhood. I know I'm not the only person in this city that has this problem. I appreciate you being proactive and trying to get a handle on this so they don't fill up the shelter, and I'd appreciate your vote on looking on an audit for the Bass Pro TIF. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, our next speaker is Sam, I'm sorry, Sam, will you pronounce your last name for me? Raish. Raish. Um, Sam Raish, who wishes to speak about medical marijuana. Good evening, my name is Sam Raish. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to have my voice heard during the open comments this evening. Uh, I know that for months this council has been deliberating on the matter of medical marijuana legislation. Uh, putting protections in place to protect the city of independence. Uh, I'm a three-tour Army combat veteran, uh, disabled veteran, husband, uh, father to three young children. Uh, I also believe strongly in protecting our community. Uh, I love Kansas City. It felt like home the minute I moved here to start a family. Uh, I'm currently able to use my military experience to continue to provide security by making it <coughs> safe for qualified patients to have access to medical marijuana as the chief security officer of our company. Uh, it's a testament to our company that we were awarded by the state of Missouri all five dispensary licenses we applied for, the maximum possible, and a cultivation license as well. Uh, every application we filed, we were awarded. The state evaluated our application and determined us to be honorable, professional, and come with a team representing the skills needed to be successful. We happen to get a license for a dispensary at the Crackerneck Shopping Center. Uh, we're excited and optimistic to work with the city to implement our vision and work together with the community. Uh, I wanted to share with the city our intention to ease the strain on the city council and the city's resources. This is a flagship and showcase location for our business portfolio and we urge the city council to enable our company to operate successfully here in Independence. Uh, we wanna work hand in hand with the city 
and wanted to purposely and personally see through our interests in the community. Uh, we appreciate you reevaluating your position and opening this up to allowing what the state of Missouri intended, and we look forward to operating at the shopping center. Thank you. Thank you very much. Our uh, final speaker is Andrew Osman, who wishes to speak about medical marijuana code changes. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the council. I really appreciate uh, you letting me speak tonight. Uh, my name is Andrew Osman. My address is 9121 Bond, Overland Park, Kansas. I wish to speak on two things tonight. First, medical marijuana. Um, <coughs> pardon me. I talked to a number of uh, residents around the area. I talked to our, our uh, uh, members of the council, and I talked to a number of business owners last year when they were when uh, you were evaluating medical marijuana. I know it's a very difficult and trying subject, one in which is not taken lightly, and I can assure you, because I've been in your same situation. I stood before here in September, I believe, last year, and I introduced our shopping center, Cracker Neck Plaza. It's located at 40 Highway and Little Blue Parkway. Um, we built it, we manage it, we own it, and we're very hands-on. Uh, we've owned it for about 15 years, and in that time, we specifically put a number of boutique retailers and local and national business owners that specifically came to Eastern Jackson County because of our word. At that time, they've seen things flourish over the past several years, one in which the residents, the neighbors truly support the shopping center, and one in which when we were approached last year by what I wanna say is the gold rush of medical marijuana, we got phone calls from literally tens of, I wanna say almost 100 different applicants not at the shopping center, but all our properties in Kansas City. We quickly found out that we had to actually vet the companies to make sure that they were honorable, noble, knew the business, and we felt that would have the best shot at getting a license in Missouri. We interviewed close to 20 different applicants specifically for Cracker Neck Plaza, and at that time, we asked them a specific list of questions. We happened to come across Mr. Raish and his team. They impressed us with the best gamut from start to finish of how they would operate the facility. And as he said, this would be a flagship location. Excuse me for a moment. Mr. Love, could you please stop <coughs> gesturing while the speaker is speaking? Mayor, it's disrespectful. Mr. Love. Mr. Love, please sit down and be quiet when he's speaking. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I stand before you tonight in, cons in consideration of the change that would help both the community and our shopping center by evaluating, and I sincerely appreciate you look looking at this tonight, one of the concerns that the shopping center had was the residential component. We have a creek that is adjacent to the property that will never be residential, but yet is zoned residential. And but for that, we would have no problems. The, the state approved the license for all five applicant or all five locations of which Mr. Rache and his team is a part of. And so we look forward to having that part of our facility and the flagship location. The second thing I wanted to say is not on medical marijuana, but I talked with a number of different uh, council members last week and I voiced my, my appreciation and I wanted to go on public record that I dealt with staff last week and the week before on another matter as it relates to expansion of the shopping center unrelated to medical marijuana. I had the pleasure of dealing with over 10 staff members at the same time. I've dealt with a number of different municipalities, a number of different staff over the years, and I could not believe the professionalism that they had, the questions that they asked, and how we could come to a resolution 
for expanding a potential tenant that's already in there. You have one minute. To uh, get it all above board, but with staff's approval. And we look forward to bringing that tenant later this spring and summertime to you. But as council members, you might not know the day-to-day -day activities of staff, but I'm here to tell you, I've seen a number of staff in other municipalities, and you guys have a great staff. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, thank you to all the speakers this evening. Um, thank you very much for your comments. That's very much appreciated, something we don't hear often enough, so um, thank you for that. Um, our, that concludes our citizen requests. Um, we are going to move on to our um, resolution recognizing Steve Wagner for the, of the city manager's office as employee of the month for February 2020. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 20706. Whereas the city employee recognition program recognizes outstanding performance by employees of the city of Independence, and whereas the employee recognition committee has selected Steve Wagner with the city manager's office as the employee of the month for February 2020, the city council of the city of Independence, Missouri joins in recognizing Steve Wagner as the city of Independence employee of the month for February 2020. Thank you. I'd entertain a motion for approval of the resolution. So moved. Second. I moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? <clears throat> yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Steve Wagner has been with the City of Independence for six and a half years as video production specialist in the public information department within the city manager's office. The variety gets the variety he gets on a day-to-day -day basis is what Steve says he likes most about his job and career goals are to build City 7 into the most effective, economical, and compelling government access media outlet in the region. The most valuable lesson, Steve says, is to always keep learning. On a typical day, Steve is maintaining the City 7 studio and equipment, running around town shooting and editing video segments, and broadcasting live meetings from City Hall and the Independence Utilities Center. Steve says he believes it's the central location and the people that makes Independence a good place to live, work, and visit. Outside of work, Steve says his interests are travel, family, pestering his six nieces and nephews, and watching the Chiefs dominate. <laughs> That's in all caps, Chiefs dominate. Please join me. <laughs> in recognizing Steve Wagner as the February 2020 Employee of the Month. Congratulations here. Get your picture by the flag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock it over. Okay, next we have a proclamation for Engineers Week. Whereas engineers provide the talents and skills necessary to analyze and solve complex problems and create the infrastructure essential for the high quality of life which citizens of Independence, Missouri enjoy, and whereas the Western Chapter of the Missouri Society of Professional Engineers, in partnership with the Eastern Chapter of the Kansas City Society of Professional Engineers, are celebrating the 69th Annual Engineers Week through a ceremonious luncheon at the Marriott in downtown Kansas City on February 21st. And whereas the week of February 17th, 2020, has been designated worldwide as the 69th Annual National, National Engineers Week. Now, therefore, Eileen N. Weir, Mayor of the City of Independence, Missouri, on behalf of the citizens of this great city and the City Council, does hereby proclaim the week of February 17th, 2020, as Engineer Week, Engineers Week in Independence, Missouri, and, upon, and call upon all citizens and civic organizations to acquaint themselves with the issues involved in providing quality infrastructure and to recognize the significant contributions which our engineers make every day to our health, safety, comfort, and quality of life. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Jim, oh no, who's accepting this? Jim. Oh, okay. <laughs> 
<laughs> you didn't kick the TV, did you? Kick the TV, did you? Congratulations, very much. Okay, and now we have a proclamation for Kansas City Chiefs Football Club Day. Whereas the Dallas Texans were founded in 1960 by Lamar Hunt and were one of the eight charter members of the American Football League, and whereas the team agreed to move to Kansas City on May 22, 1963, and renamed the Kansas City Chiefs on May 26, 1963, and played nine seasons at Municipal Stadium in Kansas City, Missouri. And whereas the Kansas City Chiefs won three AFL championships in 1962, 1966, and 1969, represented the AFL in Super Bowl I against the Green Bay Packers and won Super Bowl IV against the Minnesota Vikings under head coach Hank Strom, marking the final competition before the 1970 National Football League merger. And whereas the Truman Sports Complex, named for President Harry S. Truman and Arrowhead Stadium that has been home of the Chiefs from 1972 to today, and is known as the loudest stadium in the National Football League. And whereas the Kansas City Chiefs has, have won 12 division championships since 1970, including four straight AFC West championships from 2016 to 2019. And whereas the Kansas City Chiefs defeated the Houston Texans on January 12th, 2020, in the AFC Divisional Playoff game by a score of 51 to 31, overcoming a 24-point deficit and defeated the Tennessee Titans on January 19th, 2020 by a score of 35 to 24, overcoming two 10-point deficits to secure the AFC Championship and win the franchise's first Lamar Hunt Trophy. And whereas Coach Andy Reid led the team to its first Super Bowl victory in 50 years, defeating the San Francisco 49ers at Hard Rock Stadium, in Miami, Florida, in Super Bowl 54 by a score of 31 to 20, earning Coach Reed his 222nd win and first Super Bowl championship. And whereas Chiefs Kingdom will celebrate the 2019 Kansas City Chiefs players, coaches, staff, and fans with a Super Bowl victory parade in Kansas City, Missouri on February 5, 2020. And now, therefore, Eileen N. Weir, Mayor of the City of Independence, Missouri, by virtue of the authority vested in her by the City of Independence, Missouri, does hereby proclaim Wednesday, February 5th, 2020, as Kansas City Chiefs Football Club Day in Independence, Missouri, and encourages all citizens to join in celebrating the never give up spirit of our hometown team. Thank you. Okay, now we're going to recognize our scouts who are here this evening, Councilman Perkins. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So we do have a Boy Scout troop here with us. It is Troop 84, the Country Club Christian Church. There's 15 scouts, five leaders, and they are working on their citizen and community and communication merit badges. And also, a little side note, this troop just turned 97 years old. So please stand up and be recognized. You're welcome to stay as long as you like. It's already started out to be an interesting evening, so thank you for <laughs> watching how your city government works. Thank you very much. Uh, this takes us to our consent agenda. Uh, Madam Mayor, if I might, power four, number four, I believe, uh, before the consent. Is that appropriate? Uh, yeah, can you make a motion for the consent agenda before we first, please? Okay. Um, Move for approval of it. Okay, Mayor Weir, I move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Uh, Councilman Van Camp wants to um, pull item number four. Um, are there any other items which pulled for separate consideration? 710, 711. Okay. Any others? Okay, Madam City Clerk, we will call the roll on the consent agenda minus item number four and resolutions. 20710 and 20711. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, Council Member Van Camp, item number four. Yes, Madam Mayor. Uh, this is a result of the passing of the street maintenance uh, 
bill and program that we put on the agenda as in perpetuity. That means that they can count on the money always coming in. 12 pieces here of a snow equipment that will greatly enhance our ability to keep the streets clean. And there won't be downtime on the existing outdated material, uh, trucks. I just, this is what comes from going ahead and the people seeing what, uh, what comes from voting it in. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Would you like to make a motion for approval? I would. Is there a second? Second. Then moved and seconded. Um, is there any further discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item 4 passes. Council member Huff, 20710. Yes. Um, the reason why I brought. Whatever order you like. Yeah, I'll do, I'll do 710 <laughs> first. That's okay. with the uh, animal welfare, and, and uh, Ms. Young hit that right on the head. Um, being the pets and police uh, tax passed, I just wanted to make sure that we had this uh, committee, uh, the animal committee, to look into this and see if there's a, a way to uh, get this low cost or no cost. I know that it's not an immediate answer, but over time, uh, that should take care of all these stray cats and dogs and stuff running up and down the roads. So, make a motion for approval. Second. So moved and seconded. Um, I totally agree. Ms. Young and I have talked about this on several different occasions. I do want to remind um, the community that um, in the process of developing the Proposition P, we did um, reactivate a account at the Truman Heartland Community Foundation that was set up um, originally to build a new animal shelter. And with the circumstances such as they are and no need in the immediate future to build a new animal shelter, we converted that fund over to helping to supplement the cost of spay and neuter services. So that is what that, um, that fund is intended for. It is um, a you know, private non-for-profit organization, so if anybody in the community is so inclined, you can make a charitable tax-deductible donation to the Truman Hartley Community Foundation to that fund, which is held by the city uh, for that purpose. And um, that's something that we need to continue uh, absolutely to promote, as well as some other um, legislation that this council has passed regarding um, the ability to trap, neuter, and, and release. Um, so thank you very much for bringing that forward. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Item passes. Next. Number 2711. This one's a little, a little more difficult than that one. <laughs> um, been hearing for a long time uh, the taxpayers and everybody's frustration and lack of uh, transparency, including tonight. We heard it again. Um, when I was a candidate, now as a councilman at large, I continue to hear that. Um, the biggest, uh, I was out at uh, District 3 Forum, and 4 actually, both of them, and there was, this is always brought up as this Bass Pro Tiff or Falls of Cracker Neck. Um, anyway, it's just, I just keep hearing it and hearing it. Um, part of the problem I have with it is that um, the Interest rates right now are at the lowest, probably since World War II. We're still uh, doing balloons and kicking a can down the down the road, not really locking into anything. And um, another thing is, is that we continue to spend millions and millions of dollars, and the taxpayers, uh, when this was brought forth, it was this was supposed to be a revenue generator and not a liability. And so I've been thinking about this. Uh, and brings to mind, I think, uh, Zona Rosa is, has the same thing going on up there, but I believe it's the county. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure it did ever get out of court, but they're um, same situation. It is in, in a court to, to try to figure this thing out, but um, I just thought it'd be a good time that maybe we um, had an audit out there and seen where all this money's going and report back. 
I'll add on that one. As for a motion for approval. Second. So moved and seconded. Is there any discussion? Uh, I have a question. Mr. City Manager, I seem to remember getting reports about the falls at Cracker Neck Creek. Um, would this audit do more than what those reports would do? And if, if the answer is yes, how much money is the audit going to cost and where's that money coming from? Um, so the council and the city receives every year a comprehensive annual financial report. Um, that report looks at all the different city funds, the general fund, the utility funds, all the special revenue funds, and really it ensures that you know our accounting and bookkeeping has been done properly to um, adopted audit standards and financial best practices, et cetera. Um, I don't know that we have, uh, at least in the time I've been in here, um, zoned in specifically on the financials of this particular TIF. Um, when I was management analyst, I was asked to do more of a answer some questions. That was back in 2012, so we were less than a decade into living under this TIF. So that was intended to provide some answers about the appropriateness and the mechanics, et cetera. Um, this is a, a TIF that uh, underperforms. Um, we have refinanced several times, which has helped cut the bleeding in the present tense. It has allowed us to um, cease the city, the, they are city-backed bonds, um, so it has allowed us to stop doing a general fund appropriation to close the shortfall, but when you do the refinance, it certainly adds to the term of the, um, of the bonds. Um, so we are going to need to do another refinancing in the very near future. Um, as Councilmember Hupp alluded to, some of the um, balloon payments that are coming up are just not realistic for the city to make, and this TIF doesn't perform and allow for those to be made. Um, so in speaking with the Director of Finance, um, this audit would be appropriate as a precursor to that to really help us understand. Uh, he's relatively new to that position still, so helping all of us understand the lay of the land with this TIF before we embark on a, um, on a refinance and really also help us start to grapple with how, you know, let's not make decisions that are just one, two, three years down the road, but through the life of this TIF, how can we best manage and mitigate our losses with that? I have no idea how much this audit would cost. So Are we talking 10,000, 100,000? Right, so when in working with Council Member Huff on this um, resolution, we don't know that quite yet either, and that's if the resolution is written such that it gives us the direction to go figure out a process for engaging an auditor, okay. and as part of that, it will allow us to figure out the cost of that audit. So we'll be back in the chambers with more answers once, but with Great. passage of this resolution, we'll let us advance to the next step to help have a better dialogue around it. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh -huh. um, I do, oh, go ahead. Oh, thank you, Madam Mayor. I, I agree with uh, Council Member DeLucy. Everybody mark that down. Uh, <laughs> we do get reports on this yearly, and uh, we have people out in the audience that cat call and bring up the Bass Pro Shop, although the audits clearly show where the money's being spent. When we first came on, Mayor and I on council, we pushed it and we got it refinanced. And we got it refinanced at a better interest rate and stopped the big cash outlay that the city was putting into it. But we knew that we couldn't predict the future as far as real estate or development out there, so they were, it was a short-term fix. So yes, we will have to go back in and refinance again. But this was one of the reasons we did it the first time is to stop the big cash outlay, and we do get the reports on it. So um, I don't see where it makes much of a difference, but if we're gonna borrow the money, we would go through this procedure anyway, so I support it. Mm -hmm. But the public needs to know there's reports every year on this. It's public knowledge, they can get them. We did refinance it, and we're not putting a bunch of cash out of the general fund into this, no matter what people out there seem to wanna believe. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. City Manager, I think this is well-timed. I mean, this is something that has been a challenge in our community for you know a number of years, but um, it's, it's a good time to re revisit this and refresh on what is coming in and what is going out. As Councilman says, we were, have been successful, thank you to you know great fiscal management at the city to um, not be making payments out of the general fund through uh, these opportunities, through interest rates and other things that have allowed us to refinance. 
this debt, but the number is big. I mean, the number is um, significant and um, we're not chipping away at it significantly. Um, one of the things that I have inquired about is um, when the TIF was established, there were a number of restrictions that were put into that as to what could develop in that Cracker Neck, the Falls of Cracker Neck Creek area. Um, as we know, um, the landscape of retail has changed significantly. We are not seeing retail development um, at nearly the same rate as we were even five, ten years ago. Um, and I believe that that is limiting our opportunities um, to make this perform better. Um, so I have asked that we um, approach the developer and see about potentially revisiting the restrictions on that TIF and opening it up for other kinds of more contemporary development that may not generate sales tax, but would, would potentially assist those businesses that are in the district to, um, to capture more sales. Is there any more information regarding that? We did engage uh, the developer and their legal counsel in that conversation about their interest in amending the TIF, and they are supportive of exploring that. Um, so now I think we can get down to having that conversation in more detail. Um, my other question is, as we pull on this thread, <laughs> is since our obligation to this point has been that we pledge uh, the proceeds from other successful TIFs to paying the bond, the debt service on this TIF. How do you envision that? I, I, I just don't know if we can just look at this in isolation is my point because this, um, you know, we have other very successful TIFs around independence that are performing well, have paid off early or are, may pay off early or on time but we, to this point, have said that we are not going to recapture that revenue. We are going to pledge that revenue towards um, the Falls of Cracker Neck Creek. So I'm, can you explain to me maybe how complex that may get? Um, I, I don't think it will get too complex. I mean, as you say, as we, as we close out other TIFs um, and the, the dollars go to the other taxing jurisdictions, we're trying to understand and identify a strategy about how we can use those revenues to help support this particular project. Um, but I think this audit will be more focused on the performance and behavior of this okay. specific TIF and okay. ensuring that um, every available dollar is, is being invested and spent and managed appropriately. Okay, very good. Are there any other comments or questions? Madam Mayor, yes. I may. Um, total agreement with this to take a, a, a strong look at it to flow the accountability of it, um, would this fall under the, the guise of the Audit and Finance Committee to help keep this on point and keep that moving forward? It would be my recommendation that when we do come back with a methodology and a plan of how we're going to embark on this, much as we do with the annual financial report mm -hmm. um, that, that Councilmember Doherty alluded to, that that be you know presented to um, the committee reports, regular updates given. And then as we always do, then bring that to the council as a whole for final consideration and approval. Just want to have a good flow of accountability. This is highly important to figure Correct. this out. Thank you. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Councilmember Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Um, resolution passes. Uh, this takes us to our second reading. Madam City Clerk. Bill number 19-058, an ordinance amending chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to medical marijuana facilities, second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Yes, Councilman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. This is a attempt to regulate where these went. As we all thought, there would be two to four license issued in the City of Independence, and in the end, there were four license. Most of the commercial property, you'd want the most visibility, 
and you wouldn't want them in the neighborhoods. But we have a lot of places in the older neighborhoods or once neighborhood groceries, beauty shops, and such. And those are places that are very hard to market because they've been grandfathered in as commercial. We didn't feel that that would be a good fit for some of these shops. We go through the ordinance and find a, a, a mistake in the drafting, a drafting error, the 500 foot. We didn't catch it and everything backs up to residential eventually. The problem was we couldn't get a consensus just to take that out because everybody wanted to take or add their own little piece. Uh, there was never a line of people down the street to sue us. One of the persons that tried, it was thrown out, didn't catch it, didn't get it. We got four weed licenses, two on 40 Highway, 40 in Nolan, 40 in Little Blue Parkway, more or less. 50% of the weed licenses came to my district in the second district next to Hawthorne Apartments. So I've got 50% of the weed licenses right up by me demonstrates the need for weed, I guess, up here. But wouldn't it have been better if we could have said, well, hey, one of those licenses is good for Hawthorne Apartments and we'll cover it fine. Can't we move one down into another commercial area that needs a little commercial development? And they thought that would be undue. So I've got two of them within moments walking distance of each other. The other two are out on 40 Highway. So I'm gonna support this, but I would just, this is my prediction within probably a year or so that there will be another round of these licenses given out and more people clamoring for more spaces. And then eventually this will become like it all has throughout the United States, recreational, all bets will be off and anybody come up here and plunk their money down and open a shop. That's when we need to keep looking at this ordinance to make sure that they're put into the commercial areas that are best suited for high traffic and not into the residential neighborhoods. So we need to keep this on the back of our mind that as we move forward, that we go ahead and, and come up with a, a good idea to regulate them to where they go. So again, they, they develop in our commercial areas, not in the neighborhoods that have grandfathered in places that were once commercial. That's it. Thank you, any other comments or questions? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council Members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 20-008, an ordinance amending Chapter 5, Business Licenses of the Independent City Code, Establishing Medical Marijuana Business License Regulations, second and final reading. So any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 20-009, an ordinance authorizing a contract with Interfab Power and Industrial Inc. for the replacement of high service pump adjustable frequency drives at the Courtney Bend Water Treatment Plant for $704,200. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. Bill number 20-010, an ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute for and on behalf of the city a certain pipeline license to construct and maintain a water pipeline on railroad right of way with the Union Pacific Railroad Company on Walnut Street, west of Crane Street, Section 1, Township 49, Range 32, providing for payment to the railroad of $3,000 and all in, or, uh, I'm sorry, all in accordance with the attached pipeline license. Second and final reading. Is there any discussion on this bill? Hearing none, please call the roll. Council members Huff? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Doherty? Yes. DeLucy? Yes. Van Camp? Yes. Mayor Weir? Yes. Ordinance passes. This takes us to our first reading. Are we done with the first readings? Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. This takes us to our first readings. Bill number 20-011, an ordinance authorizing a contract with Genesis Environmental Solutions, Inc. 
for the replacement for filter house number four structures at the Courtney Bend Water Treatment Plant for $486,737, authorizing future change orders not to exceed $48,673.70 and or time extensions as deemed appropriate and appropriating $106,394.70 from the water fund net assets. Bill number 20-012, an ordinance amending chapter 11, article seven, child care facilities of the independent city code amending the definition of daycare home. Okay, um, that concludes our first readings for this evening. Uh, this takes us to council member comments. I will start on my left with Councilman Van Camp. All right, happy day chiefs. Happy day. <laughs> All right, go chiefs. Oh, chiefs. Thank you for everything, everybody. Councilmember DeLucy. Nothing, thank you. Councilmember Hall. Nothing this evening. Councilmember Perkins. Yes, Madam Mayor, thank oh. you for asking. You're welcome. Last Thursday, the uh, city manager and I, we went out on my 101 and we took a tour up around um, Fairmont. We're just driving around, taking a look at some different stuff. And one of the things that I pointed out we were discussing is uh, the roads. Roads being beat up, destroyed, disrupted by uh, utility companies. Um, gas companies specifically. So the question that we were bantering and talking about, and it was quite timely, I did receive an a email from a constituent this morning talking about this same subject along Liberty Street from Jones Road to Kentucky Road, where the gas company has been working there. So a um, couple points. Number one, when the utility company comes out and they do cuts and disrupt the roadways and patch the work and, and, and patch the, the roads in a shoddy way. Who oversees that? How do we oversee that? And how do we get that work done correctly um, for the first one? Number two, what do we have as a mechanism uh, within our city if, since we do have, a, I think, a, a fairly aggressive overlay program that if they come and tear up a road that has been overlaid, what type of, of fee, penalty, permitting fee that we add on them to, um, well, to help pay for that road. And three, as we're moving forward with our sales tax, um, street overlay tax that also incorporates, excuse me, overlay, um, incorporates um, sidewalks, they will be tearing up sidewalks. Do we have that same policy for fees and permitting for uh, disrupting our, our sidewalks? Um, so, Councilmember, your first point, um, Public Works has a right-of-way engineers uh, and inspectors who, when a company wants to come in and make some kind of a street cut, they have to get a permit for that, and then these inspectors are responsible for uh, looking at the job site restoration and making sure that the repairs are in accordance with our standards, and there's penalties and fines, et cetera, if they're not. So, certainly, this is one we're going to um, need to continue to work on there. Um, we do have um, some room for improvement, I would say, in two areas. One is with our five-year capital improvements program, or CIP, um, I want to work with our staff on refining that process such that we really, we don't have a true robust five-year CIP process right now. Um, here's my plug. That's one of the many breaks in the charter. It lays out the, the process for the CIP, but it's dated and flawed. We need a better process that lays out here are the true projects, the funding, the sources for them, uh, and the years in which they're going to be completed. In doing so, we would be able to provide notification to, you know, fellow utility partners like Spire of we're going to be overlaying Wilson Road in 2023. Um, so now's a great time to go in there and get your repairs made. Um, there is a reasonable expectation that these assets should ha have a certain life cycle. Uh, but every time those roads or sidewalks or curbs get cut, it compromises that life cycle. Um, so I think there's opportunities for us to go in and improve how aggressive we are with that so that we can come up with almost a regressive scale of, you know, within certain number of years of a road being reconstructed or overlaid if they are cut or, you know, some kind of repairs made, um, that a penalty is assessed on top of the normal street cut permit fee. Um, so that we can discourage. Um, certainly, you know, you can't plan for everything, but I think there's a lot of reasonable planning that could be done of 
now's the time to update our gas line, our cable line, our internet line, it's, or, or our own city utility lines. Um, we're doing a much better job internally as an organization, communicating, you know, where Public Works can let the utilities know, here's kind of the timeline of the different projects. Um, but with the outside partners, there's some opportunities for improvement there. For sure, I work in Kansas. For sure, I work in Kansas City, and they're just tearing up everything all across the metro. It's just not us. They're just doing it. I work on Warnell. We finished Warnell, or we, the Kansas City uh, f did Warnell about seven years ago. Spire come in and just tore that whole damn thing up again, and they're doing that to our town here. So I want to hold them accountable. If they're going to do that, then they need, they must repair these roads in an adequate way. Correct, and that's that's something that, in speaking with the assistant city manager over this and the public works director, we see a lot of opportunities to improve a lot of areas of the development process, but this would be one of those right there. But I will plug this, it really starts with a more robust five-year capital improvements program and plan so that we can communicate with the partners a lot better than what we're able to do right now. Well, I have three roads that I'll, I'll get with you after the council meeting I'll okay. put in for you so we can start tracking this stuff. <laughs> thank thank I, you. Okay, thank you. Um, I do have a few things uh, to speak about tonight. Um, yeah. Oh, did I forget you? I got hosed. Yeah. My apologies. Well, that's okay, because I wanted to parlay off what he had. Yes. I had a couple neighbors call up, and after waiting several years to get their street done, they were elated that they finally got it paved, and it really looked great. And a utility came and cut a, a huge cut in it recently, it went halfway across the, the lane. And of course, you, they filled it back, and you can't get good compaction in the wintertime, you can't get asphalt. Mm -hmm. So I, I brought that to city's attention, right, right, well, you know, it's reasonable, we can't get it really fixed back perfectly now. So my question is, is there any way that, uh, Mr. City Manager, that this is like put on a list that they will go back and check it? Because once we brought their attention, well, yeah, we can't get to it now, I get it. It may be sometime in the spring when they get it, if there's some way to go back and make sure a follow-up that they did get the road put back just like it was before they dug it up. Because technically it's back as best as we can get it right now in the, the winter time. So my question is if the neighbors don't ever call again or if I don't go by there, will it be forgotten and then, then it's again a, a compromise structure. Uh, so this is where it's been excellent that the council's pushed for improved use of technology and innovation because of our migration to an internal system known as CityWorks. We log all of those and it doesn't go, when it's logged in the computer, it doesn't go away. You can't lose it like a post-it note or right, some of the right. old that's, scrap notes. Like that's what's happened to. before Absolutely. in the past. Correct. Right. Well, that's good because, you know, when the weather warms up, there would be a certain time where we'd expect for them to come back and tamp it back down correctly, fill it up to grade, and get the asphalt back where it was because they, they were really happy with the beautiful job that was done uh, this spring. And, uh, of course, you have to dig something up. you got to dig something up. There's no way around it, and there's right. no way to fix it now. We just want to make sure they go back and get it right. Okay. Thanks. Yep. All done. Okay. Now I'll... <laughs> go for it, right. Um, a few things. Um, first, Ms. Alexander, um, I appreciate your comments this evening regarding diversity, um, and it's very timely. This is something that we have um, really been putting some attention on and will continue to put some attention on. We have um, been working with a diversity and inclusion task force over the last several weeks. Um, to advise, which are citizens um, who have stepped forward to help us initiate uh, these discussions, some of them, you know, very challenging about our history and about our current practices and attitudes. Um, these are, have resulted in some very positive developments regarding um, some memorandum of understanding that we have had for many, many years with the community of concerned citizens. Um, specifically dealing with the diversity and inclusion in our city workforce and on our city boards and commissions. So this will be something that we will continue to put emphasis on updating personnel policies um, and some trainings that we um, are intent on implementing. Um, we will um, be engaging um, likely in the spring 
in our, count, our annual strategic planning session, which typically happens in November, but with the elections um, in April, we determined that it would be best to postpone those because we know um, for certain where we will have one new council uh, member and wanted that person to be able to be included in that process. We are nearing the end, believe it or not, of our five-year strategic plan, independence for all, so it's time to start planning for the next iteration of that five-year plan, and I assure you I, that diversity and inclusion will be part of that discussion um, moving forward. Um, my annual State of the City will be on Thursday this week at 6 p.m. at the Genealogy Library at Lee Summit Road um, near Drum Farm. Um, the doors will open at 5.30 and then the presentation will begin at 6 o'clock. Um, as many people have remarked tonight and, and throughout you know, the year, uh, there's a demand from the community for more communication with their elected officials and their city staff, so I certainly encourage you um, to come. It's free and open to the public, and I will give you an update on some projects that were completed this year and a little bit of what we envision and are working um, towards in 2020. Um, as we uh, move into the strategic planning phase this spring. There will be ample opportunities for citizens to participate in um, helping us to set these priorities, and I highly encourage everybody to take a, to look, be looking for those. We will do our level best to promote those as we always um, do and invite you to be a part of that process as well as our annual budget um, hearing, which we hold every year. Um, and last and certainly not least um, is uh, the election, that it, primary election that's happening tomorrow and um, certainly encourage every, um, all the voters in the third and fourth districts to exercise your right to vote and participate in the primary election um, tomorrow and then there's going to be a big parade on Wednesday, so <laughs> we'll be looking forward to that great celebration and our um, Kansas City Chiefs Football Club Day in Independence on Wednesday, and I'm looking forward to seeing how our community goes out and celebrates that as well. Mr. City Manager, anything else? Nothing tonight. Thank you. We're adjourned.